fellow Toastmasters and guests. <clears throat> I picked today's topic given all the challenges that we've had this week. And I wanted to take a few minutes to kind of give you a high level overview of how this web technology that we've become so dependent, how it works and why we have problems sometimes and the kind of things that we're so accustomed to that sometimes it's difficult to find our way around it. So many of you so, since Saturday have been seeing this message, server not found. So when you type our domain address, you can't get to the, to the web page that we need. And many of you are wondering why. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today and explain how the web services work and when they don't work, why they don't work. So there's a little bit of an overview of the internet ecosystem, which is a lot. There's thousands of technologies, thousands of products, millions of people around the world working on making these services available. As you know, the internet is global, and it allows us to do many, many things, from shopping for pencils or a TV on Amazon to doing our online banking, and obviously managing our roster and the agendas for our club. So I'll go into a little bit of everything. So. All of us have computing devices, and most of us have multiple of these things. I think my last count was about 15 or 18. And now TVs are being instrumented with internet technology, refrigerators. Samsung has a refrigerator that has, you can display uh, YouTube programs on it. it it's insane. There's uh, thermostats that are being enabled with uh, networking technology as well. So there's a lot of advantages. The homes are becoming instrumented with a, a, a lot of technology to make, presumably, our life easier. It's all good when it works. When it doesn't work, we got problems. So we all have computing devices. Every one of those computing devices has a browser or an app, depending on what you're using. A computer, there's multiple browsers that are loaded, and that's how we submit requests, that's how we get to websites. Obviously, when you're using a, an iPad or a smartphone, you have apps that do the work for you. And uh, you get, right now there's two flavors, there's an Android or an Apple iOS version. And of course, all of this is just to get us to the websites that we want to use and the information we're trying to get. Every computing device, in order to access those resources, needs to have a way to get there. So we all pay lots of money, and AT&T, Verizon, and, and uh, Charter, and all the internet providers make billions of dollars so, you know, with our payment for internet services. And this is required. This, there's no other way to get to that. So whether you're on your cell phone or on, the, um, on a computer at home, you have to have some kind of internet service to get to the internet. And of course, all of that is just to get us to internet service providers such as Netflix, Amazon, uh, Facebook, and many other services that are out there. So what happens? How does this stuff magically communicate? Well, when you type in a name such as YouTube, that information is translated, sent to a service which is called the domain name service. And there are companies who specialize in tracking and maintaining these millions and millions of websites all over the world in terms of what they what the name is and map to some some resource, a web server somewhere. So that name gets resolved and eventually it finds its way to the YouTube server that Google has hosted in who knows where, given their large infrastructure and and the data centers all over the world. So we don't know where the service is and we don't care. We just want to get to it. So typically that's how it works, but the the services, what they do is they resolve the name, which is how we understand things, to a computer address, which is how the computers understand things. There's a decimal notation, which is called an IP address, and everything has a specific IP address. Everything has to have it, in order, and it has to be unique. So no two places can have the same, no two web services can have the same IP address because then you don't know where where to go to. So for YouTube, this is an IP address that I found. That's one of the many that I think they have. Mm -hmm. And then for us, we have a hosting service 
for the uh, our website, which is hosted by a group of people who have ties to Toastmasters, and they have created an environment, the web server, specially suited for, for our meetings. So it's a really nice tool, but again, you know, we have to be able to get to that. And what happens is when, as an example, when that mapping breaks, we can't get to what we want. So in the case that we're, the problem we're dealing with right now is the fact that somewhere the, the mapping of our renotoastmaster.com domain name has been changed and now it doesn't have the IP address of the server where it needs to go. So our web server doesn't work, our email address that's tied to that, nothing works. Now, Yen and I have been working for the last three days trying to troubleshoot the different systems, reaching out to the different services to try to resolve this problem. And we made some updates which we won't see whether they worked or not for another eight hours or so. So we're hoping that by the end of today we'll have our site available. If it's not, then we have more work to do. Moving on. I don't know in Cold Springs if we'll get enough. Can we stick it in a chair? Just yeah. thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. Mark. Thank you. So resuming. So the IP address, one of the examples I wanted to give you to kind of demystify this. The, an IP address is equivalent to a mailing address. So we use zip codes to identify particular cities and regions within a city. So similarly, IP addresses use a notation so that it can identify where the traffic needs to be routed. Eventually, you parse out all the, the street name and the address, the specific address assigned to a building, and then the, the mail gets there. So web traffic is the same way. It's routed through many, many devices throughout the world, and it finds its way to that one resource. So that's the simplest way to think about that. Of course, inside the facility, you, can, you have your own way of distributing to the individual or departments, whatever it is, and at home, all of that, everyone who has an internet service provider gets one IP address assigned to you. And then inside the house, you can have, every device has to have one. So you may have 15 devices inside, but they're all reaching out through one IP address to the rest of the world. So again, what's happening here? So every web server, again, that's the source that we're trying to find information from, has a way to interpret the information you're requesting. So there's commands that are sent, and it parses out the information, and it's both looking into its content database for something that you're asking for, a roster, a part number for a car, battery, a you know TV, whatever it happens to be. That database will then respond back to the web server with a response and send it back to you. The, the person, that client, that is looking for that information. Again, I'm using our example here for our website. So, but what is a content database? Well, in simple terms, it's a, it's a file cabinet. It's a file cabinet with lots of folders and many documents inside of each. And all of these are identified by a particular link, a particular resource. So in our case, we have roster, we have templates, and we have the agenda. And when the web server responds, the database responds to the web server that interprets the request, it sends back our agenda that we're so familiar with. And that is displayed on the browser at, the, at each one of our devices, no matter where we are. So, how does... How does all this work? Well, there are many, as I mentioned, there's a number of languages that have been defined over the last 30 years that help all this matter. There's protocols, there's computer languages that make all this happen. And they have evolved every three to five years. All of this is evolving in order to keep up. The life of any technology is about 18 months. And it just keeps renewing and the legacy becomes pretty significant. So I wanted to just show you an example of YouTube, something we pretty much all use. So I happen to be on the best songs of 87, reminiscing about those days. <laughs> and, uh, but what I want to explain is that every detail on a page that you see has specific information underneath it that tells it how big the image is, 
the color, the color of the text, the font size, every every one of these details is is accounted for. The list, how many items are displayed, what is displayed. And when you look at the code itself, this is what you get. Now in your browser you can click, you can actually right click and look at the properties of a particular page and you'll get something like this. Of course, there's lots of um, there's thousands of lines of code per page, and they're very difficult to understand. But the machines understand it. There's text here that we can see what it is. So, for example, there's plain text that we can interpret, and you can see what you're looking at. So the best songs of 1987, classic, some kind of category, how this music is categorized. And then Will Top's music happens to be the guy's YouTube channel where this is residing. And everybody can have, if you have a Gmail account, you can have a YouTube account, you can have your own channel. And there's, again, places where you have other similar information. But somewhere in here, there's a definition that says how many pixels the picture that you saw is, the, and what image that is, or what video is being displayed. So again, regardless of what web services you're using, you all have, it, it all works the same way. And at some point you might wonder why when I go to Amazon, every time I search for something, the next time I go back, it's displaying that information. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happened that they want to know so much about everything that we're doing on the web that they track every click, every site you go to, every item you request, that all information is tracked for better or worse. And Facebook is one of the worst for that. <clears throat> And then what they do is they analyze that information. And companies like Facebook sell your data, supposedly anonymously, but they sell what you're looking at. And this is how companies like Facebook make money. I'm an anti-Facebook person myself, just so you know, for a lot of reasons. But that's beyond the point, besides the point. So, but what happens is every web browser has information about what you're doing. And every app tracks a lot of information on what you're doing. And on the phones, the apps, you have to be careful because a lot of times these apps are wanting to gather a lot more information about your contacts and personal data. If you have credit card information, sometimes they're, you know, they're looking for that. So you have to be very careful as to what, what is allowed to access. So, of course, as I mentioned, when things don't work, you get errors like server not found or the famous 404. 404 is that simple message that says a file has been moved, deleted, or somebody at some point. So if you happen to have the, the URL, which is what that link has, to a particular page that you, you cannot find, that's what happened. It's been removed because it's obsolete or because somebody was shuffling around the, web, the file system within the web server. So, come on. So the next time you look at YouTube or any web page, you can think about what's, what's really happening underneath it. And in some cases, you'll have an understanding. If you run into problems, you'll have a better understanding of why you're not either getting to the web server or getting to the page that you want. And if you own as a business that relies on this, you also have to understand this in order to be able to, like we're doing, Jan and I are doing right now, we've got to chase down the people that are managing all of this so that we can restore our web services.